Hey, thanks for coming back to the channel. This past week, it's been super exciting. We've gotten over a thousand subscribers now on the channel, and I just can't tell you how much that means to me. It's fantastic to see so many people enjoying the videos, sharing the videos especially, and commenting and starting discussions about the, the different topics and how you approach things that I'm talking about. That's the whole idea here. I wanna learn from you, and hopefully we can all learn together and get better at what we do. In this video, we're talking about aux sends. So far in the series of Mixing Basics, we've covered the physical inputs uh, and their controls. We've covered the high pass filter. We've covered the uh, input delay and we've covered the channel EQ. So now it's on to aux sends. This is gonna be a basic look at aux sends, but it's gonna be pretty hard to cover this without getting a little bit into mix buses in general. So hopefully if you're not familiar with all the terms, you'll stick with the, the series here and uh, ask a question down below if you need any clarity on anything, I'd be happy to answer your questions directly. Auxins have really come into their own over the past 10 years or so. In the days before digital mixers were commonplace on almost every job, one of the biggest restrictions and practical differences between one analog mixer and another was the number of auxins they provided. When I used to work in a music store selling primarily analog mixing consoles, I'd have to remind people that with analog mixers, Inputs are generally cheap. You can find a large channel count mixing console for pretty reasonable money. You could back then and you still can today. What's always gonna demand a premium price though is a lot of outputs. Outputs are expensive. Flexibility with outputs are expensive and that goes pretty much across the board from analog all the way through to digital consoles. Although nowadays we have an astounding amount of control compared to what we used to get on even the high-end boards 10 years ago. Considering a large portion of our job behind the mixing console consists of what I would call directing audio traffic. Aux ends are gonna be where we turn a lot of times to create those paths between our inputs or sources and our outputs or destinations. Deciding how we wanna mix, group, and interact with those sources along their journey to their destinations is gonna tell us what type of aux end we need and how we wanna go about setting it up in our console. As I mentioned before, it's very difficult these days to talk about aux ends without getting further into mix buses and what you would traditionally call a subgroup. That's because they are all just different types of mix buses. The terminology you'll see in Yamaha consoles, for example, when you're setting up your mixer, will be a choice between a fixed send, which will act just like a subgroup, or a variable send, either pre-EQ or a variable send pre-fader. Don't get confused here as variable refers to the option to choose later between pre and post fader sends in the traditional sense, while the distinction between pre EQ and pre fader here refers to the pickoff point of the signal in both of those cases. A fixed send is simply a subgroup, which gives you only on and off control to each channel in that group and tracks along with each channel's fader for level control to that group. We use aux sends for all sorts of different tasks, some of which include monitor mixes for wedges, sends to effects units, in-ear monitor mixes, IFB or interruptible foldback sends for broadcast use, zone sends, record feeds, feeds to the press, delayed zones or delay ring sends, mix minuses for things like teleconferencing, and anything else that needs a dedicated mix. We also have different types of aux sends to choose from, depending on the task at hand. Typically, you will at least have the option of selecting either a pre or post fade send. This is the most fundamental choice and allows you to choose between a send that acts independently of the channel's fader, pre-fade, or a send that tracks and corresponds to the channel's fader position, post-fade. A typical example of where you'd want to use a pre-fade send would be for a musician's monitor wedge. You want the monitor mix to remain consistent on stage for the musician, regardless of how much or how little of each source you may need in the main PA mix. In contrast with this, if you are doing a monitor mix for a theatrical play, you may want to use a post-fade send here so that the actor's microphone is only live in the monitor mix when they enter the stage and you bring up their corresponding channel fader into the main mix. Going beyond the choice of pre or post-fade will be the pickoff point of the signal within the channel signal chain. 
Many consoles, both analog and digital, allow you the opportunity to choose where your aux signal is taken from, either pre or post EQ, and even whether the channel's insert point affects the send. These features give you even more possibilities for creating exactly the mix that you need for each specific job. While this choice is now as simple as making a software selection, in analog consoles it can often involve physically opening the console itself and repositioning internal jumper wires. One example of where you might want the aux send to be post EQ would be if you're creating a feed to a zone speaker. You would want any EQ changes you make on those channels of your main mix to translate to that zone mix for consistency. An example of where you would not want the channel EQ to affect a send might be when you're creating a send to an effects unit. You may want to have the full range signal sent to the effect for processing, while being able to make channel EQ adjustments on the source channel independently. Similar examples would be true for pre and post insert point. If you have a compressor inserted on a channel for a specific need, you may or may not want that to affect the aux send. Likewise, if you have a gate inserted on the channel, you may want to pick off the signal prior to that gate to send to an effects unit or other destination where the gate could be detrimental. If you like the videos on this channel, one of the best ways to support the channel without spending any extra money is to follow the affiliate links in the description below. You don't have to buy those products, but as you shop on those sites, uh, it will help to support the channel a little bit, and it really does help. So thanks again for doing that. It makes a big difference. Aux returns. If you're lucky, you'll be able to avoid using aux returns these days. Most consoles now have enough channels available that you can return any effects from their processors back onto actual channels. This is always preferable as it gives you the same level of control and routing over those new sources as you would have for any other source on the console. But if you should find yourself running short of channels, you can return those effects or any other line level source to the aux returns on the console. This often gives you limited, if any, EQ or routing possibilities, but will easily allow you to blend simple effects such as reverb or delay back into your main mix. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and of course share the videos and leave a comment, shoot me an email, let me know if you have any questions. Uh, I'd love to hear from you again. I'm right in the middle now. This week I just started working on upgrading the website. I'm moving from wordpress.com to a wordpress.org uh, website and hosting package. It's going to give me way more flexibility over the content, how I deliver it. It's definitely going to take me a little while to get everything transitioned over, so I'm not shutting down the old website all the links still work everything is as it was but the new website is live and you can click to it if you go to the channel page and click on the link in the banner that'll take you to the uh, new website and you can check it out as I work on it and let me know what features you'd like to see I've got the ability now to set up a forum on the website if that's something people want uh, so let me know what you'd like to see on the website what sections what features what kind of stuff would make you come back regularly and what kind of content are you interested in if you have experience working with wordpress.org uh, websites please give me a shout i'd love to hear from you and maybe uh, get some help from you i'm definitely willing to admit that i'm in over my head just a little bit on this but i'm figuring it out and hopefully we'll have a great website here shortly i really appreciate all of your support